So here they come. Best of Breeze for 2019 in the Terrier Group, starting off with the Airedale Terrier. The Australian Followed by the Australian Terrier. The Bedlington Terrier. Here's the little lamb-like Bedlington Terrier coming across the ring. A little dog from the borders of England and Scotland, the Border Terrier. The Bull Terrier. You can't miss a Bull Terrier, can you? Just look at that personality. The Miniature Bull Terrier. And here comes his miniature variety. He doesn't think he's any smaller. <laughs> the Can Terrier. Always on their tiptoes, bright eyes, the little Cairn Terrier. The Chesky Terrier. Ever more popular, this is the Chesky Terrier. The Dandy Dimon Terrier. Just listen to the applause. How could you not? They melt everybody's heart. The Dandy Dimont. <laughs> Then the Fox Terrier, the Smooth. The Wire Fox Terrier. And a close cousin wearing a nice wire jacket. <laughs> the Glen of Imal Terrier. It's quite rare to see these now, the Glen of Imal Terrier. The Irish Terrier. Always in that fabulous red wire jacket, the Irish. The Jack Russell Terrier. And a big entry for the Jack Russell today. This breed really taking off, but just look at that quality. How could they not? <laughs> the Kerry Blue Terrier. Characteristic coat, the that Lakeland gorgeous Terrier. colour, the Kerry Blue Terrier. And the very distinctive Lakeland Terrier. The Manchester Terrier. Smart, black and tan, smooth, glossy coat. The little Manchester the Northern Terrier. Terrier. And the breed at which uh, our judge excelled, the Norfolk Terrier. And the Norwich Terrier. Similar cousin, but with lovely prick ears like the spires of the cathedral, the Norwich Terrier. And the Parson Russell Terrier. Slightly longer leg version of the Jack Russell, the Parson Russell Terrier. The Scottish Terrier. The Scotty oozing attitude. Don't take one of these on unless you're good with boundaries. <laughs> the Celium Terrier. And the breeds Frank Kane used to breed, the Celium Terrier. The Sky Terrier. Instantly recognisable, the Sky Terrier. The soft-coated Wheaton Terrier. And this lovely coat on the soft-coated Wheaton Terrier. One of the crazy clowns of the Terrier group. Yeah, it is too. The Staffordshire Bull Terrier. A roar of applause for the Terrier with the most entries at the show the today, the Staffy. And here comes the Welsh Terrier. And finally, the West Highland White Terrier. Best in show of Crufts at Crufts here, of course, very recently. The West Highland White Terrier in that wonderful crisp coat. Thank you very much, Marina. So, as we see, the West Highland White, I think it's way around the superb. So now our judge gets the opportunity to take a look at these best of breed winners for the first time. Of course, fierce best of breed competition has been going on throughout the halls here at the NEC all day today. These are the best of breeds that all the different judges have sent through, but they now have to compete against each other to give us our group finalist for the Terriers. It's a very simple tiered system, the judging at uh, Crufts. Lots of people find it complicated, but the dog 
has to enter its various classes against other dogs of its breed. That's how to become the best of breed, and that's what we have here. All the best of breeds, as Jess has just said, compete for the best of the group. And after that, that winner goes through to tomorrow night's best in show. It really is. It's a, it's a lovely system. I, I thoroughly enjoy it every year. Judge taking a look at those outlines. What her first impressions are? Who does she like the look of? One thing they have in common. That's huge amounts. Usually courage. immense quality in the terrier group. Interesting. Natural show dogs with their fantastic temperaments. So now she has to go back to look at the first dog, which has already been brought to the centre. Some of the smaller dogs, there's a table for them. That's not going to be required for this first one. This is the Airedale Terrier. And this one has come all the way from Wakayama in Japan. It's a three-year-old bitch called Daniela, and the Airedale known as the King of Terriers. Just a couple of years later, in 1886, the breed gained separate classification of dogs. Natural diggers and chasers, the Airedales. Strong-willed, they can be stubborn and independent, and that black and tan coat has two layers, harsh on the top, soft and weatherproof underneath. And it's a dog with remarkable scenting powers. It's been used all over the world, you know, Africa, India, Canada for tracking. It's also aided the Red Cross in times of war. Remarkable dog, that's the Airedale Terrier. Very smartly turned out socks too on the handler. <laughs> Aren't they? There was a good entry for Australian Terriers today. 19 actual dogs for Judge Paul Wilkinson, who sent forward this dog to represent the breed in the group ring. His number is 9642. A great all-rounder, the Australian Terrier, terrier, terrier Australia. bred, of course, originally well, in Australia to guard, to hunt vermin, to herd, and to be a great companion dog. And they really are happy, outgoing little terriers. This one's come uh, all the way from, uh, was originally bred abroad and was imported to this country. It's actually a three and a half year old dog. His pet name is Merlin. Very happy boy, says uh, the owner, uh, Mr. Paul Wilkinson. But, uh, I beg your pardon, uh, Mrs. Ruth Jones, who's out there handling. And this one in blue and tan. They can also come in a clear sand or red for that harsh top coat. The cheerful, lively, smart little dogs. A that rugged, neck. hard bitten appearance, isn't it? And the neck rough, really characteristic of the breed. Lovely dark, keen eyes. Well, this is the unmistakable Bedlington Terrier. This one's come from Russia today, not from Bedlington at all. And the owner says it's the most beautiful and clever dog in the world. She might be right. And that coat is uh, thick and almost linty to touch, standing out from the skin with a little twist on the longer hair, especially on the head and the face. So something needs a certain amount of trimming to get that really neat uh, outline. Light springy movement. Tough little dog, good in the house, makes a delightful family pet, but uh, quite capable of fending for himself. Tough little and dog. of course frequently used in crosses with whippets, greyhounds and deerhounds to produce lurchers. They have such good working ability. That's the Bedlington Terrier. Just like last year, the that characteristic otter head of the border terrier, bred to go to earth, to go down holes, and bravely follow a fleeing fox and either hold it there for it to be dug out or to be dealt with. Super temperaments, little border terriers. And this one's a four-year-old dog. He's got a great name. He's called Pete. I like that. 
from Newcastle upon Tyne. Ball man, happy, silly, friendly with everyone and everything. And owner Mrs. Nicola Anderson says, loves to come running with me. And that body is deep enough for lots of heart and lung room, but they're fairly long. Border terriers should be capable of being spanned by both hands around the shoulders. I quite like a comment in the breed standard that says that if the nature were left to itself and dogs just bred naturally without man selecting the matings, then the end result would be very much like one of these. All white, all terrier dog. He interbred the bulldog, the now extinct English white terrier. So this is the bull terriers, Jess said as they came in, unmistakable look of them. This one uh, has come from, well, it's from the UK in Birmingham, but uh, the handler is Lukasz Zabinski. It says, it's a lovely bitch with a fabulous temperament. The original white dog was bred, more colours have become available, as we can and a gentleman named James Hinks was responsible for the modern bull terrier, probably created from bulldogs and the English white terrier, which is sadly extinct now. They were nearly always white to start with, and then the colours came in later. Well, to a large extent, the colour is that uh, patch, the black sort of patch over, the, over one eye. They do come in other colours as well, though. And that egg-shaped head, absolutely characteristic of this breed. Well, handled properly, a dog like this, they, they'll live in peace with his neighbour very easily, but they, they'll need a, a firm hand to fit effectively into modern life. That's a nice bitch, this one. It's two years, three months old. Now we have the miniature bull terrier, similar standard, but a smaller size, not to exceed 14 inches in this case, and they were first recognised as a distinct breed from the bull terrier back in 1943. This one is Oki. She's come from Spain to compete here at Crufts, five years old. Natural show dog with that amazing terrier temperament. Just look at them, checking out everybody who's applauding. <laughs> now, smaller examples of the bull terrier have been known since the early 19th century, but they did fall out of favour prior to the First World War. They are actually removed from the Kennel Club Breed Register in 1918, but in 1938 there was a revival. Spearheaded by Colonel Richard Glynn. The Bull Happy Terrier smiling the Bull Terrier Club was born there, it is, Robert isn't it? Croyman from 113 Cairn Terriers here today. He's chosen this male, number one. And there's a little Cairn Terrier. This one is from Sweden. My word, we've got a lot of uh, non UK uh, animals taking part in this uh, group. Happy and full of joy, this one. Got one CC in Finland and two in Sweden, the Cairn Terrier. Cairns, of course, immensely prized for their gameness when they're working, but also they make the most fantastic pets because of their temperament. To begin with, size especially varied a lot with this breed, depending on local demands, but eventually the cairn we know today gained recognition back in 1910. There's a little three-year-old bitch called Dill. Dogs of the Cairn type can really be traced back some 500 years, and the breed's development runs pretty parallel with the Skye, West Highland White, and Scottish Terriers as well. Super view of that head there should be slightly small in proportion to the body and framed by that wonderful harsh coat. She awarded best to breed to this bitch number 10325. This is the Chesky Terrier, the national dog of the Czech Republic, and the coat is customarily trimmed over the head and body, leaving a beard, moustache, eyebrows, and of course that skirt covering the lower half. And this one has also come from abroad. This is from France, a champion in France, national dog of the Czech Republic, gentle character for a terrier breed. Short-legged, they should be rectangular in outline, with that drop-eared character. Nice silky coat, requires trimming along its back and body. Brisk and vigorous on the move, with plenty of drive from those legs. Just look at the skirts kicking up. The wonderful, soulful expression of the dandy dimmer can easily melt your heart. 
unmistakable again, the Dandy Did Monteria. This one is from Spain. Loyal, loving, and a gentleman. And uh, the owners say we're dedicated to dandies because they're so rare, with only 300 born worldwide every year. There we are. It said that the Dandy Dinmont is And the Dandy Dinmont's characterized by that almost weaselly body and the silky hair on his handsome head. More than a top knot, it goes all the way round and makes the head look large in proportion. It was actually named for a character in Sir Walter Scott's novel, Guy Mannering. The colours for these dogs, liked by the audience, as you can hear, uh, they're known as mustard and pepper, and they were adapted from the names of Mannering's dogs. So there we go. Looks very sedate, but it can move pretty quickly. And it's thought that uh, dandies may have been the source of the wire coat on the Dachshund with the crossbreeding. So there we go. In two colours, 66 dandies were here today. This was the best of them. Beautiful, large, dark eyes. A lovely pet name. He's called Colonel Brandon. I don't know how, what do you call him? <laughs> Colonel Brandon. <laughs> 21 months old. He's lovely. Isn't he? <laughs> Sonia received an entry of 64 and chose this male. Now, the first of the two fox terriers, this, the smooth, the first variety to be recognised. In its earlier days, it was known as the English Terrier. Name changed in 1860. Full of character, and you can always see that with the Fox Terriers on the tiptoes of expectation. Yes, yeah, an active, very lively breed. Likened in the standard to a short-backed, well-made hunter covering a lot of ground. This is one of the most lively and alert of Terriers. Well, apparently Brian here likes to watch the telly, and uh, his absolute favourite is the Specsavers ad with the collie in it. <laughs> likes seeing it get his, get his coat shaved off, doesn't he? Doesn't like him with long coats. <laughs> Capable of standing to up to any amount of exercise, he's always ready to deal with rats, rabbits, and of course, <laughs> and judges. foxes and judges. <laughs> Brisk, straight, and those front legs should be absolutely parallel coming towards you. We now know it as the wire-haired fox. It's a 16-month-old dog, that one. Right, now we've got the uh, wire-haired version. As Jess said as he came in, uh, lovely, lovely wire coat on the top there. It's probable that the rough coat was developed before that of the smooth, but the appearance of the wire fox terrier in the show ring was 20 years later than the smooth. The breed descends from a rough-coated, wire-haired, black and tan working terrier. And that head is almost a wedge, furnished with beard and moustache. Lovely dark eyes should be full of terrier fire, and those small V-shaped ears just neatly folded over, nice and close to the cheeks. Very alert, holding his head very nobly there. Active, bold, somewhat vociferous at times. This one isn't, though. Cheerful and happy, makes an excellent children's playmate and a family pet. It's a very classy dog. Come this from one's from Malta, this one, to uh, compete today. Tail cranked up, full of attitude. One, zero, four, six, the Wire Fox Terrier. And now moving on, we see one of the Irish terriers. Now we have the Glen of Imal Terrier, an ancient and solid breed. Well, that's not surprising given that they were developed to hunt badger in the Irish Glen from which they take their name. And if anybody has ever seen a badger firsthand, you know that if you're going to have to take that on, you need to be a decent sized dog. County Wicklow in the Emerald Isles. Well, the Glen is, it's still thought of as a working dog who's, you see on the move here, his, his bowed front legs were desirable to give the dog what was termed a mechanical advantage when digging. Makes sense, really. Tough, robust dog. Just like a badger. <laughs> they should give the impression of great substance for their size. And, of course, sadly, this is one of our vulnerable breeds now. This is a three-and-a-half-year-old dog called Quinn, who is, uh, according to... Owner Jane Withers, he's a jolly, sweet natured dog. And he looks it. The Irish Terrier was the first. Glen of Amal Terrier. There are only 20 here today. 
Magnificent, the Irish Terrier, standing tall there. This one has come from only from Peterborough. First one we've seen for a while. It's not uh, come from abroad. This is one that is affectionate and fun, according to Mrs. G. Thomas, who's out there with him. Racy in outline, the Irish Terrier, and always in tones of this wonderful fiery red. They were once described as the poor man's uh, a sentinel, a farmer's friend, and a gentleman's favourite. <laughs> it's nice, that. Dog for all classes. It's a real daredevil at heart. Reckless, sometimes foolhardy, where canine opponents are concerned, but uh, nevertheless has the softest, most gentle and loving dispositions, coupled with a delightful sense of humour. Harsh and wiry top coat, straighter and flat, softer undercoat. Totally weatherproof, so this terrier can do his job regardless. And now we walk. What a smart little outline that is. This is the Jack Russell Terrier with his roots in the working terriers of the British Isles. The Jack Russell was actually largely developed in Australia and only recognised here as recently as 2016. And this uh, two-year-old bitch is called Demi and has come from Santa Barbara in California in America to take part today. The best of 113 Jack Russells that were shown here and considering that the breed was only given official recognition by the Kennel Club in 2016 that is a massive entry Standing just 10 to 12 inches at the shoulder the Jack Russell distinct from the Parson Russell which is 13 to 14 inches so on longer legs and confident <laughs> Full of attitude, not particularly interested in the judge at this precise moment. <laughs> well, just very interested in what's going on in this very big ring, because he's only a little lad. Actually, it's a little girl, isn't it? Terrier specialist Bill Brown Cole was in charge of the Kerry Blues. Well, this is the very distinctive Kerry Blue Terrier, that fabulous coat there. This one's come from Italy to take part today. The coat is a real feature of the breed. Puppies are born black and can take up to 18 months to change to this great, this sort of shade of blue. Some say all of them make up the Kerry Blue. This is Nembo. He was top terrier for 2018. And uh, the Kerry Blues are fiery and proficient ratter. He was also used originally to hunt otters, thank goodness not anymore. That coat protecting him from freezing river water if he was. Yes. Short in the body, level backs, nice deep chest. They give the impression of real power in a terrier form. Yeah, the actual origins of the breed are obscure. There are reference to a blackish blue dog native to County Kerry, which may have been the root stock. And now we move on to the Lakeland Terrier. Developed in the valleys of Cumbria and Westmoreland from various terrier breeds, this is the Lakeland Terrier, bred to run with a pack of hounds and built for stamina and agility. And from one very well-known uh, British kennel, uh, uh, this one, Saradon, this is England, John Averis handling out there. Cheerful little rascals, these dogs, hardy and agile. In its early years. Courageous, affectionate, tireless, lovable and naughty. I think all of those words apply to the Lakeland Terrier. And we're looking for real balance here. Smart and workmanlike, and yet nonetheless Lakelands make super show dogs. Just look at that outline. Plenty of reach in front. You want good, strong drive from those hind legs. That's the Lakeland Terrier, 10759. Compact all through the Lakeland. Renea now turns her attention to what was once known as the English Gentleman's Terrier. We know this is the Manchester Terrier. And, and this is the, is the little Manchester Terrier. This one's a five year old dog called Brad, international champion, European champion, Italian champion, has come here from the Netherlands today. Always black and tan, this breed. The markings are very distinct with those tan spots on the cheeks and above the eyes and a little black thumbprint you can see just at the top of the tan socks. 
which gives it a very great tone of speed. The name, of course, denotes the origin. It's likely there's some whippies in his ancestry as well. Very elegant and graceful. These dogs were bred as ratters and can still be relied upon to dispatch vermin pretty quickly and efficiently. And now on the table we see our best breed, Norfolk Terrier. Marilyn Clayton judged the entry of 70 Norfolk Terriers. And she awarded best of breed with speech number 1085. The first of a pair of Terrier breeds which were considered one breed before 1964. This is the Norfolk Terrier, the F in the name, the fold in the ears. It's actually a two-year-old bitch called Fizzy. Got five cc's to the name, had one best in show and two wins. Name Fizzy is she's a fizzy personality. That's according to Mrs. Ruth G, who actually owns. One of the smallest of the terrier breeds, the Norfolk, and it's described as a demon for its size, which I think is delightful. Compact, keen and alert, absolutely fearless in all circumstances. Yes, typical short-legged terrier, sound, as you say, compact body. Developed, of course, to catch small vermin, predominantly caught and noted for being a ratter originally. Britain was in charge of the Norwich terriers. 42 here, and this is the dog number 10910. And this is the Norwich Terrier. Noting by those prick ears that uh, Jess mentioned when uh, they came in, at Norwich Cathedral. He's only ever attended three shows the Manchester show, he got the CC and best of breed, and third in the group. And here he is, the best of 42 Norwich Terriers here today. And this is a hardy little terrier under that hunt jacket. <laughs> he might be small, but he's up for absolutely anything. Gave and lively to the last, and you can see that in his expression. He may be low to the ground too on those little short legs, but you still need plenty of drive in that movement. These terriers were designed to work. He's only a young one, this as well. 13 months old, Albert. <laughs> That's a great name. Very affectionate and a bit of a clown. Well, you can see that, can't you? One zero. Hard and wiry top coat over a much denser, softer undercoat to keep him nice and warm. Straight and true in his Zero action. Mark Court Morris was in charge of the fast muscle ring today, where there were 103 fast muscle terriers entered. And she awarded best degree to this male, number 10951. Like the newcomer to the group that we saw earlier. This is, this is the Parson Russell Terrier on longer legs, bred to work foxes. He's agile and swift on the move. He can chase, but also go to ground and uh, hold the fox ready for the spade. Two year old dog, this one called Stanley. 10 cc's to his name. He's a working terrier. Well, this one isn't particular, but they, they, the breed is and should retain the ability to be uh, spanned behind the shoulders by average-sized hands. I don't mind an average-sized hand, but I don't know exactly what it means. He can be smooth or rough-coated, neither jacket. And, of course, none of these terriers now are going to be used for the work they were originally bred for. You know, you're not, you, you, it's illegal now to take foxes out of holes underground, but we still see in the form of the dogs the job they were originally bred to do. from across the borders, as the name suggests, the Scottish Terrier. The Scotty, low to the ground. He was also bred to pursue his quarry down holes. He's substantial and well boned for his size, with a strong neck holding that head really proudly. Just look at the attitude in the face. And I suspect that we've been here twice. He's been here in this country before, taking part. This one's from Russia. And I may be mistaken with that. Three and a half year old bitch called Eva. Greek standard was drawn up 20 years later in 1880. A couple of years later, the first. A very popular breed, short legged dog from the Highlands. Sturdy, low slung. More often thought of as black, like this one, but you can have a striking wheat nor brindle coloured coat, which is quite rare though. Beautiful long head, those prick ears, and the tail cranked up, showing all the attitude you want in this breed. 
the height of the breeze pops the length of that skull is accentuated by the beard and magnificent moustaches true terrier but happy to curl up in the favourite armchair as well he'll soon rouse himself at the slightest sound though good guard dogs quite a bark on them the Celium Terrier just today by Terrier Specialist Bill Bramco well, this is the uh, Celium Terrier. First uh, win is today for them. This one is a nine-month-old dog called Speedy. We're looking for an oblong outline in this breed, and the jaws are described as being punishing, powerful, square and long. And the coat might look plush, but actually if you put your hands on it, it's got a wiry texture, white or white with lemon brown, blue or badger pied markings. It's not surprising really when you think of the mix of uh, breeds that went into producing a Celium. Probably the Welsh Corgi, Dandy Dinmont, West Highland White Bull Terrier and the Wire Fox Terrier amongst others. That's what the Celium came from. Though his origins are rural Welsh, the Celium can be as much at home in town as in country. This one's come from Ireland. The Sky Terrier, one of the oldest of Scottish breeds, long, low and level-backed. The Sky has a long, hard, flat coat with shorter hair on his head, which forms almost veils over his eyes. But it's fine enough, he can still see where he's going. Or she, in this case, because it's a young bitch, 14 months old, called uh, Bailey. Won in the Manchester Championship show, got a CC, best of breed, at 12 months of age. I say just 14 months old now. It's one of the oldest Scottish breeds. And those well-feathered ears, erect in this case, but they can actually be drop-eared as well. And this particular Sky really enjoying his march round the green, on the green carpet. Beautiful coat on there, isn't it? The Sky, once known as the Terrier of the Western Isles, involving into what we now call the Sky Terrier, with the mix of breeds behind him, including Cairn Terrier prototypes as well. Enter today under Tom Johnston and Tom Ward in best of breed for this bitch number 11290. As you would expect from this breed's Irish origin. There were 111 soft coated Wheaton Terriers here today, as one would expect from his Irish origin. The soft coated Wheaton has a very happy go lucky outlook. Five, year, five and a half year old bitch, this one called June. As well as controlling vermin of all sizes. A larger frame than many of the terriers in this group. They're renowned for that lovely nature. They derive their name from that soft, silky coat which comes in shades of ripening wheat. Such a lovely description of the breed standard. Medium sized and fairly compact. They're more upstanding, active, and hardy. This particular one is a multiple international champion. Hoping to do even better and add the UK to its title of top dog wins. So Rene Sporovilis now turns her attention to the Terry Group's largest entry, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier. And here we have the oh, most popular of the Terriers, 350 dogs competing at Crufts today, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier, smooth-coated, muscular and of great substance for its size. It was a referee's decision. And despite his historical connection with fighting, he's become a great favourite in the show ring. This hasn't actually been allowed those who affect his traditional rugged looks. They are very rugged looking. But uh, they can be very cute dogs. I've watched display teams of Staffordshire Bull Terriers having a ball. They're wonderful dogs. Three and a half years old, this bitch called Rocky from Sweden. And that head, short and broad, deep with pronounced cheeks and a rose or half pricked ear. A busy Tom Johnson was our judge for the Welsh Terriers today and from an entry of 41. And this is the Welsh Terrier we're looking at now, originally used for hunting fox and badger, native to Wales of course, usually in this wonderful black and tan terrier coat. They should be compact and very affectionate in nature. 
two and a half year old dog this one called Clint <laughs> his uh, kennel name is actually champion Esquire Wyatt Earp uh, there we go Clint a joy to own no problem at all he's so very loving say Joanne and Mike Vickers the owners short backed substantial ribs strong all through the Welsh Terrier those feet are almost cat-like. High set tail always standing to attention. It's quite interesting. It's considered the Welsh and Lakeland Terriers, which have a considerable similarity there, may well have a common origin prior to the Roman invasion of Britain when their Celtic owners retreated to the Welsh mountains and the Lake District. But it's all possible. The West Highland White Terrier, number 11787. The dog emerged triumphant from an entry of 126 under Judge Angus Gordon. Mixture of white and this is the West the Highland Sky White Terrier. This one's called Kosha. It's come here from Moscow in Russia to take part today. It's one of the most popular of the terrier breeds, the West Highland White. They have a really nice, cheerful, outgoing personality. Instantly recognisable by virtue of that harsh white coat, particularly profuse around its head. They're deep-chested, a compact little terrier, carried on short, muscular legs, oozing attitude and style always. And always ready for a walk, come snow or shine. Small enough to pick up and take anywhere, just the right size for a house or flat. An all-purpose pet, the West Highland White. There were a lot here today, 126 of them. This was the best of those. So, that completes the individual so that's the last of our terriers being seen. Rene Spore Willis now going to go down her line and decide who Third she's going to pick. The winner of this group will be one. First group winner to take part in the best in show competition tomorrow evening. Whilst our judge Rene Spore Willis takes the final look at the group in its entirety, let's take this chance to congratulate all of these super best of three winners. Uh, the applause now from the crowd as our judge looks at the whole group before making her selection. She'll make a short list of uh, probably eight. It does vary sometimes, but uh, we're expecting her to take out eight. She's a picture of concentration. She's got some quality in that group, and of course now she's had a chance to have her hands on the dogs. She can see exactly what's going on under the coat. She knows what she likes. But she has got to shortlist it down to a much smaller number, so I'm sure some dogs she's liked very much having to go home unrewarded. So what are we going to see drawn out? No one right at the top of the list there. The first of the shortlist. First of all is the Bedlington. The Bedlington. The and the miniature the Bull Terrier. We've got that lovely dandy Dinmont. The, the Irish, Irish Terrier, Terrier and the Jack Russell. The Kerry Blue. The Kerry super Blue, Kerry yes. Blue. Top Terrier for 2018. The Scottish Terrier. And the Scottish Terrier has come out as well. The West Highland White That's Terrier. That's her selection, I think. What have we got? The One, two, three, four, five, and six. And the Westie, no, the Westie. The Westie comes out at the end. The green carpet, the big ring of grass, and I hope you have a lovely day. Well, that's a lovely selection of dogs, and I mean, we have seen them in lovely close-up here. It's been a joy to look at them. They have really been very smart. They look marvellous. Great to see. But we have a short list of nine, so uh, see where we go from there. Just discussing with her steward what she wants to do with the dogs now to get them to show to their best advantage. First up is going to be the Bedlington, five-year-old Matwe from Russia. Super example of the breed. Racy lines, that instantly recognisable clip and coat. This dog has won 
in 2015, 16, 17 and 18. Won uh, best of breed in world, in world competitions. European winner too for those same dates. Crufts, best in show, best in breed rather. 15, 16, 18. It's kind of 19 <laughs> now. The, the miniature, miniature Bull Terrier oh. smiling all over its face, tail wagging. This is Okie Doki from Spain. Best of breed at the World Dog this Show. One, one, Seven five. group wins. So a really good track record. Some form for this one. Lovely bitch. And now off goes the Dandy Dinmont. And the little Dandy Dinmont coming out there. Bred in Canada, but come to compete from Spain. That gorgeous dandy face, the melting expression. Weasley body. Taking it all in his stride. The Irish Terrier. And the Irish Terrier now. This colour is just beautiful. Another male, 105. This is two year old Simon. And our next short is the Terrier. The Jack Russell. The little Jack Russell. Demi, two years old, Florida. come to compete from the USA. Number one, zero, six, nine, eight. The power the of the Kerry Blue. Blue. Two and a half year old Nimbo here. Sent to us by Bill Brown Cole, another male. Such one, super three, Kerry seven, Blues from Miss Kennel. We've seen them on the green carpet here at Crufts before. Will they be able to take the group tonight? And now off goes the Scottish Terrier. Another Russian Scotty competing at Crufts. Loves to show and very friendly with other dogs, this particular one. Eva, she's three and a half years old. Long and low, but full of power and attitude. The West Highland White. The rear at the end here, we've got the West Highland White. This one, Kosha, from Russia. One one seven eight seven. And ladies and gentlemen, I think you should give yourselves a round of applause. What an electric atmosphere! What a super lineup! Let's hear it for these superb finalists. So Rene has one last look along this super. So there's the spotlights and the boards so coming out. We know he's going to be the winner of the Terry. And we're about to get our fourth finalist for Crufts 2019 who is going to oh, top the Terriers just look at those outlines we've got the dog. checking the boards the are there it's going to be the Westie is it no, no it's, it's the, the Russian, Russian Scottish Terrier the Russian wow. Scotty Eva three and a half years old takes the group Terrier group two Oh, that's Jack, Jack Russell, Russell, my word. This Super is win for the breed. Really on the up. So many people enamoured of that lovely off. breed. The West, the West is going to take group three. Varminty little expression coming towards you there. Fabulous. And it's going to be the Bedlington. The Bedlington Terrier takes group four. Well, so those, well wonderful choice. I think Huge any of those we'd have been happy with taking the lead there. Winner, the Scottish Terrier. But, but there we have our know, winner. Just look at that. Gorgeous. Eva the Scotty takes the very, Terrier very group at Crufts 2019. Die-hard Terrier specialist, Sue McCourt, to come into the ring present the trophy to the winner of the Terrier Group, Crafts 2019. So the, the presentation now. Worth coming all the way from Moscow for. And very nice judging, I think, by Rennie Spore Willis. Four very super dogs.